Hey, if you're one of those golfers who casts or throws the angle away too soon, it can create all kinds of chaos with your golf game. I've seen the worst, believe me, and it's just awful. I really feel for you if this is your issue. So even if you've been to other teachers for lessons or watched other instructors on YouTube, trying to learn how to stop casting or throwing this angle away before impact, I want you to watch just one more video on the subject because I'm going to approach this completely differently and I promise you it's going to work. It's information you may not have ever heard before, so keep your mind open and stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a mission, a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, longer and straighter all the way to the green. Because golf is more enjoyable that way, isn't it? And when you have a bad cast, or you are throwing the wrist angle away too early like that, it doesn't make golf fun at all. What happens? Well, chances are you'll hit the ground behind the ball a lot if you're casting you'll hit the ball really high because you've got no forward lean on the club you don't compress the ball correctly so you're losing a ton of distance as well most golf instructors are going to tell you that the problem lies with the wrist themselves and I'm telling you that they're doing it completely wrong. Remember what Jack Nicholas used to say? He said up from the top of the swing, he felt like he couldn't throw the club or uncock the wrist too soon as long as he was moving to his left side. That's what we're going to be working on today. I don't care how early you attempt to uncock the wrists because it can never be too early if you are pivoting correctly. Totally different approach. Let's get right into it. I'm going to use this chair to help illustrate and to help you at home understand what we need the lower body and the torso to do that will automatically get us out of casting no matter what you do with your wrists. I don't care how early you want to uncock them. In fact, I encourage you to keep trying to uncock the wrist from the top. Now the key here is getting your lower body to pivot and clear enough in order to make the torso turn enough in response so that your left arm this way will make it past the ball before impact like this. Now see, I have what my teacher used to call the figure seven. That is a number seven drawn up the arm and across the shoulder. And by turning and shifting, I am going to maintain the figure seven. In other words, not let it go, but turn my left arm through the ball, do you see now it guarantees me a forward leaning shaft which will better compress the ball, hit the divot front and have a nice downwards angle of attack. So from here I will be laterally posting my left hip, turning the torso until the butt of the club sticks in front of the ball. Now, if you can do this with the lower body and the torso turning and advance the left arm ahead of the ball, it simply won't matter how early you start to throw the club. I try to cast the club as early as I can, just like Nicholas said, just like my teacher Mike Austin said, do not delay the uncocking of the wrists but instead set the pivot out in front. Let's take a look at what the right arm would look like here. Now, show me someone who casts and I'll show you someone who doesn't turn their torso and get their left hip posted up just like this. 
predictably threw the angle away too quick, bottomed out way behind the ball, and flubbed the shot. But if I can simply, at the same time I am throwing the club out, I can slightly precede that by stepping down on the left foot, driving the hip into the post, and unwinding the torso, you'll see I'll have the club in position to get a much cleaner strike. The difference between those two swings, again, show me someone and you can look at any other instructor on YouTube who wants you to un delay the uncocking of the wrists. And I guarantee you if they make a casty looking swing, the only way they can do it is by not moving their lower body the same, I guarantee you. I defy you to find me one person who can show you a cast while their body is in this position. It becomes nearly impossible because of the way the pivot advances the arm in front of the ball, you see? Now it just becomes an independent variable of the wrist uncocking the club and I simply can't hit the ground first. I have to hit ahead and I have to maintain a really nice wrist angle um, through the downswing, very powerful. Let's get all that compression and power into the ball and down the fairway. Let's look at a couple of shots in slow-mo and I want to guarantee you that I am trying to uncock the wrist here, but you're just not seeing the response until impact. I promise that what's causing the wrist to look like, on 2D video, to look like they are holding the angle is going to be this shifting and turning action that I'm doing with the torso and the lower body. Alright, let's look at the pivot action that we're going to do from down the line. I think you're going to see a couple of different details. Let's just do it with the right hand first. Let's say you're in a good position at the top. Now the only way you're going to be able to cast this from here is if you don't pivot. Or at least you don't pivot sequenced out in front of the uncocking of the wrist. So that would look like this. Again, I'm not moving my body at all. Let's say I'll just move my body a little bit and kind of stop halfway through. I'm still gonna cast the club and bottom out early. So the really the key here is to continue shifting and turning until after the strike. That would look more like this. Now I'm going to shift laterally to the left post as my left hip goes towards 8 o'clock, like this. And I've almost got my back turned to the camera right now. This has advanced the arms in front of the ball, guaranteeing that I will have a down strike no matter when I start throwing the hands into the swing. Let's try it with the left arm now you'll see the maintenance of the figure seven. Post up the left hip. Shift to eight o'clock. Continue to unwind the chest. Till now I can see that my handle of my club is five or six inches out in front of the ball, which ensures now I can hit down with the forward divot and I can uncock the wrists even though I'm throwing the energy from back here again you'll not you will not hear this in many other YouTube instructors I'm going to attempt to throw the club from there but again I'm going to be preceding it with the proper pivot out in front of the throw this gives you much more of a free feeling through impact rather than deciding how long you're going to ride the brakes 
and figure out when you're going to hit the accelerator. If you just throw the accelerator to the floor right from the top of the swing, a lot easier to be free, relaxed, and it's much more repeatable. Let me hit a shot from here. Let's watch that again in slow motion. Notice that my left hip has reached the left post and my chest and hips have continued to rotate until after I've struck the ball. So you're looking at more of my backside at the moment of impact, not looking at my side of my body. You're more looking at the, the backside this way, my back and my rear end a little bit more because I kept turning. You see, a, just a lateral shift alone is not going to be enough to keep from releasing this energy too soon. You've got to continue driving the torso around the corner if you're going to get that club to lean forward at the moment of the strike. And the number that, and the track man numbers on that shot bear out what I'm talking about. You see, I'm able to achieve a low point of about five inches in front of the ball. So I'm able to contain my low point and keep it in front of the ball, get a nice downward strike, a clean strike. I'm able to, because of that, have the right amount of forward lean, the right amount of compression, and I was able to hit the ball a long way for a relatively low amount of club head speed. So if you're looking to get rid of this awful casting problem where you're throwing away the energy too soon, reaching your peak speed too soon, making your divot too soon, um, do this home drill where you simply use a patio chair or even the wall and just use a small swing, leaving your right arm back even with your ribs and turning the arm all the way into the ball so you can feel how far you've got to shift and turn in order to get your arms to and even slightly past the ball. I would do this exercise with either arm. Here's the left arm. I'm going to turn until it gets past the ball, this end of the stick. Turn it past the ball. Hey, try that exercise at home and see if that doesn't get rid of your casting problem. I'd love to see maybe some before and after video that you've done. I'm sure you're gonna look on video like you're retaining more angle of the, in the wrist deeper into the downswing. That's the look we want. Although it's not exactly, the mechanism is not exactly like many people can understand. Hey, thanks again for watching and thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California. Paul and Diane, thank you for hosting me. And as usual, if I don't see you in the next video, which I hope you'll watch, but if I don't, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway.